I named this rig <laughs> Stupidity. They're hard work getting down, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> How does that feel? It's really important that you breathe continuously when breathing on compressed air. Breathing means inhaling and exhaling, not inhaling and holding it, or exhaling and holding it for that matter. So what they're going to do, I guess, is they're going to put you on the bike, they're going to figure out a position that they want you in, they want to stage you there, breathing, breathing from a hook to hose. Now hook has got the regular mouthpiece and the long line, that's what the guys are going to be using on their uh, little apparatus down there. The regulator's going to deliver you air. It's a demand flow. All you do is just dr draw in or breathe in. The air is delivered. You exhale. It goes through the regulator. Exhaust. The exhaust out. Breathe in. Breathe out. On cue, take your final breath. to pull the hose away. At this point, you want to be able to just expel a little bit of air. Now, you're going to be falling, so that's not that big deal. It's going up. That's the issue. So when I bring you up, because I'm going to grab you and bring you up like I've been doing, you want to make sure that you're ventilating. It's more important going up than going down. Okay? Yep. Yeah. The uh, 
Okay. Uh, what was uh, uh, Craig, can I have it? All right, Rob, reach back for your dump, adjust your air dump. He can't hear you, I don't think. Dump your air, let's see. Put his hand on the valve. Can you hear us? Put his hand on the valve. Hand on the valve. Put his hand on the valve, please. Put, Craig, take his right hand and put it on that valve. Put your leg. Hold, hold it before you do that. Great. Take this right hand. This, this, all, this whole, whole line's going to come this way here. Now, let me turn the water. This first half. He needs to let some air out. Let some air out of the valve. No, you have to turn it. It's a, it should be a free flowing, okay? That The quick dump is to dive down. If you push on it, you let a lot of air out at once. From the inside, right? Stand by for you. It's, it should constantly be bleeding air. Now, that's just sit up. How does that? No, you want it to you want it to flow out air. Let me throw it over the edge. You know, right? yeah. Tighten it a little. You need to go down with them. How's it look? Give them a once over first. Someone down there with them? Yeah.
come here, 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 come we play traditional music, we prefer to use traditional instruments. So I make this uh, scrapers for myself. So this is how it sounds. It's almost the same like the one. This one is a man-made one. Around. <laughs> and this, I was still giving them by one guy from uh, Indonesia. Yeah. I to work with you. He just say, I have plans, I see you playing with this guy, give you this plans. Dano from Botswana. See, that is him. The other one is So, we have these drums, which we made with a, a tin tin of a container, like a tin for milk or for oil or whatever. So we take the skin, we dig a ground, we put it inside for at least 14 days or 12 days for it to be soft. Then we take it out, we cut this, this things, the strap, to, to make the drum. So we just stretch the skin there, we make holes and then we start tying them together. So it's just a tin drum. This is made out of a tin and a skin. This is a goat skin. It's not the same as this one because the big ones we use the cow skin. See, and this is the cow. But the little drums, usually we use very light, light skin. So we use goat skin or sheep skin. You see. <laughs> Cool. Just do the second bit. Uh, yeah, that one. Mm. Just do the Just second line. The, mm. the second. Yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah. <laughs>
pleasure to be part of this film. Um, you know, IMAX is huge. <laughs> so, you know, uh, first of all, and then the Jimbe, the history of Jimbe is very uh, deep because uh, I think anybody who's uh, really familiar with uh, uh, drumming uh, should know that Guinea is the birthplace of uh, Jimbe, of percussion. This group uh, called Percussion New Guinea is uh, the national um, ensemble, national percussion group from the Republic of Guinea, which was found back in 1987 by the government of Guinea. It was to show the power mm -hmm. of African percussion. Mm -hmm. They went and selected seven master drummers out of, out of 500 mm -hmm. best drummers of the country. Sometimes they might spend a year or two years mm -hmm. in very intensive training before they go mm -hmm. on tour. Mm -hmm. um, and they're if, already master drummers. Oh yeah, they yeah. already so master, the master drummers. drummers get instruction. Exactly. <laughs> I will start with the big dun dun in the back, mm -hmm. uh, the big barrel, mm -hmm. which has a that's it's called dun dun, dun dun, dun dun, mm -hmm. um, and you have a two sangban attached to it. Mm -hmm. um, so that instrument is played to build the foundation mm -hmm. during the performance. move from there to the Kenkini. Mm -hmm. That's the next Sangban, which is a Kungbanan is playing mm -hmm. with metal mm -hmm. um, on the side. Mm -hmm. um, it's called a Kenkini. Kenkini, Kenkini that instrument uh, completely harmonized the sound. Actually, Dundu is played by two mallets. Mm -hmm and Kenkene is played by one mallet mm -hmm. and the djembe is played by the two hand, mm -hmm. full hand, mm -hmm. by the master drummer. Mm -hmm. And the color you see on the djembe around, uh, the decoration color, that's the color of Guinea flag, mm -hmm. red, yellow and green. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah.